Hello everybody, welcome back, Ampler here. Yeah, today we're going to have a look on this very nice lock. It's a Icon SI Abloy lock, but I think it's a direct clone of the Multilock MT5 Plus. And if we look on the key, you can see all the very nice features. We have five pin and pin uh, chambers and a sixth interactive element. Um, yeah, which is moving and you just have to push it push a very small pin, very pre just precisely, roughly, but it's not too hard. Um, further, you see this groove on the key, and this is actually interacting with sliders, um, five of them actually, and you have to set them direct to the correct position to open the lock, so the sidebar can retract. Now it works beautifully, um, and to show you the insides a bit more, I have disassembled the other half of my double euro and here you can see the main pin stack with the pin and pins and these I will manipulate just with a straight flag and with this one you can nicely push on the inside and on the outside of the pins and this interactive element I think is best tagged with a Half diamond. If it would stay still, I can show you. And yeah, you just have to find it, but it's rather easy, and then you can nicely set it. Um, but before you attack the main pin stack, you do the special thing in this lock, and you work on the sliders. Here are the five sliders. I only populated one to show you, and. Here's the slot for the sidebar. The sidebar is just a piece of metal that tries to be pushed in um, when you turn the lock and will only be able to do so if this fine ridge is allowed to by the sliders, so they must be at the right position. The interesting thing is, as you can see, the slider doesn't pop up. They are not sprung in any any means. They will just stay where they are if you don't shake the lock or so. Um, let's have a look at one of the sliders. Um, just looks like this. Here you see one true gate. And maybe you can also see the false gates. And here on this side is the side with the knob, which will interact with the groove and the key. And here you will put your um, picks on and push it around. Um, the way you set the sidebar, or which I do it, is um, I have to position the lock American way. And therefore, the sliders, they have a bit of play in their channels. And now they rest on the sidebar, just by gravity. And what you do then is, you... I, I got this technique from Artichoke, as I mentioned, and I modified it. What I will do is, I'll push all sliders as far right as it goes. This gives you a huge advantage, because you can see them. Because this is actually an optical feedback attack. You will insert a tensioner on this side, just like this, and if you now pulse the tension, just like this, this is enough of movement. You will see that some of the sliders are in rest, and some of the sliders will bounce. And this bouncing indicates that the sidebar pushes on a piece of metal of the slider. If it was in a true gate, the sliders will not bounce. And this is very nice to see, even uh, especially when, when you push them all to the right. And to see this even better, I use this tool called an otoscope, which gives you a good light in there. And yeah, <laughs> I bought this in my very start of my picking career, and this is actually the first time I'm using it. <laughs> So, what I will do is do first set the sliders, then I can just remove this tensioner as I just did. 
uh, keep it in the vise, then I'll insert another tensioner, tension now counterclockwise, and yeah, just use a flag from multi pick to set all the, the, the main stack and use a half diamond for the interactive element. And yeah, this is what I did basically. <laughs> and then I learned, well, well, if your lock is mastered, it will not account as a black belt lock. And by mastering, I mean sliders like this. Like here you have two true positions, two true gates, and therefore it is easier to set the sidebar. And the problem is, with this lock is, I have um, unmastered sliders in, in position 1 and 2, then in 3 I've just shown you, in 4 as well, you see the mastering in a different way, this is a large groove and allows also two positions basically and also the same in in the fifth position also here you have a large groove which allows two positions so i had a mastered lock still i was happy to have the ocean open yeah <laughs> I thought, well, what could I do? And I remembered, yeah, I have two halves, right? So what I did is, I used the two unmastered ones, put them in in four of the chambers, and then I populated one of the chambers with a mastered one. I couldn't get hold of five unmastered sliders, but at least now I have a lock with only four mastered sliders. So let's see how it goes. So here we are back in the vise. The key that does not work because the sliders are not matching. And but it's a nice way to reset everything. And yeah let's start by pushing all sliders as far to the right as they go. And just to be sure that I got all of them. I'll just push in there twice. And then I will insert a tensioner here for pulsing clockwise. And I see all five pins are there, but one and two are bouncing. So let me quickly set them. Check one. Yeah, seems happy now. Two still bouncing. So right along keep in one and in between. Two and three. Sit slider two. And yeah, this one seems happy now. So let's put a tensioner in. And yeah, tension counterclockwise and picking clockwise with this flat flag for multi pick here. Click on all of the pins except two. Two wasn't binding. Put a small click there now. They also seem rather okay. Let's try the interactive quickly. It's a bit hard to find like this. There we go. So I got a small core movement when I pushed on it. Let's see. 
freeze binding, small click. Let's shake one again. Nothing, two, nothing. Three, nothing, four, nothing. I had to release tension a bit. So maybe I had something overset. So two is binding heavily now. Can't set it yet. Okay, I had to release a bit of tension and now we're in a deep fold set, so only the inner pins left. Let's try to find them. And now also the sliders should be okay, they shouldn't move anymore. That was pin 1, pin 4. And I feel pin 5, but can't get there. There we go. Nice. So I don't want to turn it any further, otherwise the virus will shoot in the keyway. Mm. Good. Oh, no. Like this. And then let me put the lock just dead center and yeah, remove every thing here and yeah clearly picked and there's still my backlighting prevention device here mark our tape um, if we remove it and you see quite some difference because now you can see the sliders and so on. I think that's not so fair, so if you want to pick it optically, put the tape there. Um, yeah, get it out of the holder. The key does not matter that much because yeah, I cannot open the lock anyhow with that. So I have to get the C-clip off without unlocking it back up. Nice, because yeah, I don't have a working key. So let's use the shim. Just to be sure. Okay, follow key pins are up here, which is good. And sidebars at the bottom. And I'll put my thumb on it firmly because this will help to keep all the sliders in position. And then I can get it into this holder here, which is also nice. So let's put it here. And then I'll do a rather quick cutting, I think. Let's start from the front. I'll show you that all the drivers are in the correct orientation. So we have small pin and pin here in chamber one. Same in chamber two. And actually, this is a driver for all the chambers, except chamber six. Oh, come on. Chamber three. Again, pin and pin.
and let's go to the back and here we have another driver and this is standard or oh, yeah it has one serration for whatever reason and this is the driver for the interactive element and here in five again oh, i hope you saw it pin and pin and here in four again pin and pin correct orientation won't come out if I push with the follower. Here's the housing from the back side. You see the sidebar groove which is not going through all the way. So yeah if you want to pull it you also have to pick the sidebar. Um, yeah some anti-drill protection here and there but that's also the housing. I'll put it here and yeah with the core I will start with the springy elements so we'll try to get the sidebar out first like this and let me grab it quickly and show you you see the small ridge which interacts with the drivers maybe we can have a careful look in in there without disturbing it too much There you see the true gates, and if I shake it a bit, then you see the false gates appearing and the groove in the middle disappeared, so the sidebar won't go in anymore. So let's get the nasty springs out. I wonder why I haven't lost any of those yet, but they always come back at some point. There we go. And yeah, let's start with with the sidebar pins. Mm, yeah, we'll put them here in the in the uh, grooves for the discs. And I will show you them in a close up in in a second. Okay, then we have the main pin stack. Oh, how to get that out best. Let's try like this. Nope. Maybe insert a key and grab them with a tweezer. Yeah, that might work. Nasty to grab those. And I don't want to come out either. So let's try the old fashioned way. That was this one. Tweezers with the left hand. Impossible. Okay. Chamber three. Chamber four. No. Yeah, four. Five. And interactive and six.
So let's have a look at the core. You see the chambers for the main pin stack for the pin and pins. And actually there's some very nice over milling that you can feel during picking. So um, you have to nudge them all just a bit to get them over this final step. And yeah, for the interactive, I don't know why they're constructed like this. A bit consuming for, yeah, I don't know. But there probably is a reason to create this strange brass piece. Here's the slot for the sliders. Nothing special. They always sit in between the chambers. Sidebar slot I already showed. And yeah, we have a lot of drill protection, like here, 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 and here. And yeah, I guess that's all to the core. So I put it to the side. And yeah, let's have a final look. Ah, yeah, the, the sliders I didn't show yet, right? So let me arrange them quickly. Okay. Yeah, it's so easy to grab with tweezers. And Amazingly, so maybe I should show one slider in detail. Let's grab this one. So you see the small knob here, and then you see the false gates. Uh, and then one true gate, which interacts with the sidebar, which I showed before. So, and the one that is mastered is this one, and it has some mastering to two positions. Yeah, best I could do. <laughs> All the others are not mastered, as you can see. And yeah, for the pins, all the drivers are the same. Very nice telescopic pins. They all have a spring inside. I'll grab one in a second and show you again. And then they have an, an inner pin and an outer pin. And for the outer pin... Yeah, hard to show. Nothing special. And the interactive element with its own driver. Let's grab one interactive, and this is how they work. They have a small edge here which can grab, so they work sometimes like a spool. Okay, so if you're still here, thanks for watching, and I yeah, hope to see you in the next video. Bye!